Hi, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, I'll show you how you can create your own pralines. Let's jump right in. Okay, press Shift A, Mesh, and Add a circle. You can change the vertices to 16 right here in the bottom. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode, and then F to fill the face. And then we can press E to extrude it up. And then we can extrude it up by 1.5. And then press S to scale it down. And we'll scale it down to 0.8. And press Tab to leave Edit Mode. And then press Control 3 to add a subdivision modifier. Press Tab to go back into Edit Mode. And then press Control R and we'll add a loop cut. Press left click to confirm. And then with your mouse you can move it. And then we'll move it all the way down. And then we'll press 3 to go into face select. We'll select the top face. And then we'll press I to inset. And we'll inset it like that. Then we'll select the bottom face. And then we'll press I a few times to inset that as well. Tap to go out of edit mode. Right click and shade auto smooth. Now we'll press numpad 7 to go into top view. And maybe we'll add another loop cut here just to make it yeah so go into edit mode and add another loop cut here with ctrl r in the middle i like the shape of that a tiny bit better and we'll go into top view we'll press shift a we'll go to curve and we'll add just a bezier we're not going to use it but if we just need one and press tab to go into edit mode and then here we can click on draw and then we want to click on surface right here in the top and then we can slow softly draw on our chocolate there we go and then i think this is not really far enough so i'll just redo it and just draw until you're satisfied with your result it's always nice to try it a few times until you really have something that you're satisfied with there we go, and I think that looks great. Okay, then I'll press tab to leave edit. Before I leave edit mode, I'll go and click select box, and I'll select the official bezier, and then press X and delete the vertices. Now I can press tab and leave edit mode, and then I'll go object, and then I'll press convert, and we'll convert it to a mesh, and then we'll go into our modifiers tab, We'll add a modifier and we'll add a skin modifier. Now we'll go into edit mode and then we'll press A to select all. And then we'll press Ctrl A and then we can decrease the size of our skin modifier. Now if we leave edit mode with tab and we'll press Ctrl 3 to add a subdivision. Then we can kind of see how our sauce is looking. And it's looking nice. So then I think you can play around a bit with the thicknesses if you want. There, I think that looks great. Now I'll press Z and I'll toggle the X-ray. Now I'll press 1 to go into Vert Select and I'll select this end and then I'll press O and then I'll press Control A and then I can make it thinner on just that end. And then we'll go to the other end, which is right here. Select it, press Ctrl A. And we'll make that a bit thinner as well. And we'll toggle X-ray again. And then now I'll press G and set and I move it down a bit. And then now I'll press O to activate proportional editing. And then with X-ray on in edit mode, we can kind of softly like move it in a tiny bit better and make it follow the shape just a tiny bit better if you want to like here that could be a tiny bit more inside there's a bit sticking out so we can just click on these verts that are hidden there and just kind of clean it up a tiny bit there's goes in a tiny bit maybe even a tiny bit more there we go. 
I like how that looks. There we can move it in just a tiny bit. There we go. And this is not really a necessary step, but it's just like a nice cleanup just to make everything just look a tiny bit better. There we go. Maybe there just a tiny bit. Okay. I'm happy with how that looks. Um, while outside of edit mode, I'll right click and shade out the smooth. And I'll go here to the skin modifier and I'll apply it. And then there we go. That is it for the sauce. And we'll add the small cherries on top. We'll just press shift A, mesh. We'll add an icosphere for G and Z. We disable professional editing, of course. But press G and Z, move it up. Now we can press Ctrl 3, increase the render here to 3 as well. And then in edit mode, we can just scale it down. There's not bad 7 to go into top view, so we can kind of see how big we want it. There, and I think that sizing looks pretty decent. So leave edit mode, right click, shade auto smooth. I'll move it down a bit, and now we'll make some duplicates with Alt D, which means it's a link to duplicate. And then we can just press I, and then I kind of want the side of it to be in the middle of my 3D cursor. And then I can press Alt-D again. And that one can kind of go through the 3D cursor. And then the same for this one. Put it through, and then select the last three you made. Press G and Z, and we'll move them down. And then with Shift-Click, select the last one. And then G and Z and move everything down and just place it in your Perlene. And here you can still adjust the sizing if you like to, just to make it uh, look better. Okay, that looks perfect. Then we'll go ahead and do our camera setup. So we'll press numpad 1 to go into front view, press shift A, and then we'll add a camera. We'll go here to our output settings and we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. And then with numpad zero, we can go into our camera view and then with G and Z twice and then move our mouse backwards so you can move it there. And I think maybe this is good to start off with. And then we'll start making, selecting our Perlene, press R twice and then we can rotate it. And that looks kind of good rotate it just the way you want to and I'm gonna move my camera back a tiny bit because I feel it's still a bit too big there we go and then I'll move that in the corner there I'll press shift D move on to the left press R twice and then we'll place that one there and then with G and Y we can even move it forward a bit so it's a bit bigger and I'll press shift D and I'll move on here and then maybe rotate it completely. There we go. And then we'll press G and Y and we'll move that one forward as well. And then now I can select all of them and move them a bit better in position. And then I'm gonna once again move my camera back just a tiny bit. There. Now we can press shift A mesh and we'll add a plane. Press RX90 to rotate it. And then we'll press G and Y. We move it to our background. Press numpad zero to go into camera mode. And then we'll press tab to go into edit mode and we'll scale it up so it covers our background. Just like that. Now we'll start adding some materials. So I'll go here to my shading tab and then we'll go into view camera and we'll go reset and go into material preview and then we'll click one of our pralines and we'll press new and then here i want to go and change some things we'll start with pressing shift a and adding a color ramp and then we can press ctrl t and then we'll remove the image texture by pressing x and we'll connect the mapping to it like that and then we'll 
add the generator to the factor and then the ramp to the base color and then there you can see our color is taking shape and we move these colors a bit closer we can see that the line is not completely straight so let's add some rotation to our piece so that it comes from the bottom to the top just play around a bit and there we go i think that looks good and then i can just move this down a bit i'll move this up a bit there we go and just uh play around a bit with your rotation until you feel like you uh you're happy with it okay so then we'll add some colors to our color ramp we'll change the black color to 612 e19 and we'll change the white color to d1814e there we go then we'll reduce the roughness to 0.15 and then i'm gonna go to specular and decrease that to 0.3 there that looks great okay and for like kind of like the chocolate on top we'll select it we'll press shift click on the other praline and we'll press ctrl l and m to link our materials so now it has the same material as this chocolate so then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and copy the material here and uh, you could even like kind of name your uh materials right there call that chocolate this will be a white chocolate there we go so all we have to do here is select the texture coordinate and the mapping press x to delete we'll press shift a and we'll add an ambient occlusion and then we'll connect that to the color ramp and now we want to go ahead and change the colors of our color ramp so dark color will be 997e52 and the light color will be ffd289 and now I'm going to move the white light color all the way to the right. And then I'm going to move the dark color to 0.5 halfway. There. And this kind of like, you can see it changed the, the colors of our shading. So this uh, will give us a nice darker shading and a nice color. Now we'll select one of the cherries. Shift click the light chocolate. Press Ctrl L and M once again. I'll make a copy of this one. Call it cherry. And then now we can go ahead and add our colors. So our dark color is 841A00 and our light color is going to be EC0F04. There we go. And then now I can just select these and then that one. Press Ctrl L and then M. Select the white chocolate and do the same. Ctrl L, M. And then the cherries, control L and then M. You can also just take the whole praline and make linked duplicates with Alt D, of course, instead of Shift D if you want to. Now we'll go ahead and select the background. We'll add a new material. We'll call that background. And then we'll change the base color to E7C3B4. And that's it. So now we'll go to our layout and then we can press set here. And we can go to material preview and then now i want to go ahead and change our world color so if we go to our world tab change the color here to bf9178 and then now we can go into rendered view now we'll start adding some lighting so we'll press shift a mesh no light and we'll add an area light press g and z and move it up and go to the light settings we maybe change the power to 500 and then change the size the shape to disc and then the size to three and then we maybe want to like move it a tiny bit above all of them there we go i like how that looks now we'll press period and change our pivot point to 3d cursor and then we can press Shift D R X 60 and then R Z 45 minus. 
and then now we have a nice light shining from the side oven you can rotate it as you like maybe rotate it a tiny bit like that i see that the background is catching a lot of our lights uh, we don't want that so we'll move our background back here it's outside of the lines we'll press period change it to medium point tap to go into edit mode and then we'll scale that up again so it covers the background there we go now i'm gonna add a backlight as well so I'll press shift a light add an area light press r r y 90 minus and then g and y and we move it behind our pralines we'll go to the light settings and we'll change the size to be the same size as our camera right there and then we can change the strength to something like 700 maybe 600 a tiny bit weaker and then just give it a slight yellowish orange color there we go i feel like this one is a bit too strong as well so let's change the power to 400 perfect and now i'm gonna add a light on our background so i'll press shift a light and area light rx 90 g and y move that to the back i'll change the shape to disc the size to three and then the power to 500 and we can see that gives us our background a nice gradient i'm gonna go ahead and kind of like change the color of our light a tiny bit there maybe even decrease the strength of it there we go i'm gonna now kind of adjust the rotations a tiny bit move that a tiny bit there there we go i think that looks great maybe i'm gonna rotate this a period 3d cursor i'll go into top view and i'm gonna rotate it yeah so it's kind of on both of them as just as much as this one was so strong and then like that okay then i'm gonna go ahead and go to the render settings and then we'll change our color management look to a high contrast and then all there's left to do is render thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoyed creating your own pralines are you looking up to level your blender skills Check out my other tutorials for more tips and tricks. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and drop your questions or ideas in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And when you share your masterpiece on Instagram, don't forget to tag me so I can see your amazing work. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.